Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, you're about to watch my ultimate guitar tab guide. And I just want to talk about a couple of things about tabs. You know, the basic thing with tabs, they're not the same as what you call music notation. Tabs are basically uh, kind of like a shorthand guideline for guitar players um, on where the notes are on the guitar. So, theoretically, you can't really look at a tab of a song you've never heard before and be able to look at the tab and just play through it. Tab is more for songs that you're already kind of familiar with, so it actually goes hand in hand with actual playing guitar. Okay, so I always learned guitar as a guitar player, and then I would use tabs as guidelines for songs that I already liked, I was already familiar with, I already wanted to learn, okay? Because the tabs don't tell you the rhythm, okay? It's really just that shorthand form of where the notes are. All right, another thing that we want to be able to do is we definitely want to know the strings, the open strings on the guitar, because the tab is laid out as the six strings kind of like out on a piece of paper or whatever you're looking at. So we have a little saying to get these open strings going and it's E, A, D, G, B, and E again. And we have a little saying and it goes like this. Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. So if you've never tried to learn the strings, that's a great way to do it. And it's also gonna be a good starting point for reading the tabs. All right, so we're gonna zoom in on the guitar. Uh, I Hopefully you have your PDF book. If not, that's okay. All the diagrams are gonna be on screen, so it's all good. But now I'm gonna go through all the notations for reading tab, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it, and I appreciate the support. So here we go. Right, so if you have your PDF book, I'm gonna go along and explain each little segment along the way. However, this will still apply if you don't have it with you or in front of you. This is still gonna show you how to basically understand tabs. Okay, so what I said in that intro there is that we really need to know these open strings and we've got that saying, Eddie A dynamite, goodbye Eddie. E, A, D, G, B, and E. The strings of a standard tuned guitar. Now when we look down at the tab, we see those same letters and we see the lines going across. Those represent the strings of the guitar. And we're gonna read tablature from left to right just like we're reading words. Now if you look there, it says low E. So that's down at the bottom of the chart, but that means this E string right here. Low E because the sound is low. So when we're looking at that, the bottom line represents this lowest string on the guitar right here. So that may feel a little counterintuitive at first, the fact that you might think of this as up top. But as you get more comfortable playing guitar and looking at these tabs, it will actually start to feel natural. So we've got the low E is that bottom line. Then the next one is the low A, and then as it goes up, D, then G, then B, then high E. Now, the tabs don't show you the rhythm. They also don't show you what finger to put where. So the more that you understand about basic guitar techniques and learning guitar, um, you know, the chords and just some basic scale stuff, all of that will help you understand tabs uh, because some of it is subjective about what finger to use and things like that. So when we look at that chart, the first thing we see is the number two, and it's on, if you look at the letter corresponding with it, the A string. So that would be this second string here, the low A, and the number two would mean the second fret. So if I count it up, first fret, second fret, that means the A string right there on the second fret. So when you look at that tab, that's the first thing it's telling you. It doesn't tell you, you know, how loud or, or how soft. It's just basically a shorthand version to say, that's the note. Well, let's keep looking. Now, when notes are stacked on top of each other,
that's a chord. You play them at the same time. So whenever you're looking at a tab and the numbers aren't going left to right, but they're stacked, that means they're played at the same time. So if you look at that next thing, it's number two on number two on the A string, as in Eddie eight, mm -hmm. but then also two on the next string, the D string. So look at what that what it looks like on the chart there, and then look at my hand here, and you'll see that it's these two notes played together. Now if it was two, then two, where they were next to each other, it would be that note, then that, then that, that note. But the fact that they're stacked in the tab means they're played at the same time. Okay, now look at this next thing. Look at zero. Now zero is actually a note. Zero means the open string. So also notice that all the notes are stacked on top of each other, right? So that means they're played at the same time. This is another chord. This is an E chord, as you'll see. So look at the very bottom is a zero. Then the next one is a two, which is going to be the, the middle finger on the second fret. We don't know it's the middle finger. It doesn't say it there, but I just know it because it's an E chord. Okay, then we need the second fret on that D string. Then we need the first fret on the G string, then the open B because there's a zero there. Open high E, there's a zero there. And that low E, there's a zero there. So that means all the strings are strummed at the same time. Zero, two, two, one, zero, zero. All strummed down. So that's an E chord. Now look here, these aren't all stacked, okay? That means you're gonna go left to right. We don't know the rhythm or how fast they go by, but we know it's not a chord because the numbers are not stacked on each other. So we need the second fret on the high E, and we're gonna play that first because it's left to right. Then the third fret on the B, then the second fret on the G. Now the reason I played them separately is because those numbers were not stacked. If they were stacked, I would play them at the same time, but they're not, they're single. Okay? All right, as you see, I've switched to electric guitar, but don't fear, these techniques are for either acoustic or electric. Uh, some of these techniques I'm going to be showing you are for string bending, so I wanted to switch to electric, but the technique's all the same for either kind of guitar. So if you look below, we have a hammer-on. That is when you have your finger planted on a note, and then you pluck or pick, and then after you've picked it, you literally hammer on with your finger onto the next number. Once again, if we see two to four and it's on the D string, so it'd be Eddie, eight, dynamite, and it says number two, right? And they're strung together with the H. That means hammer on. I'm gonna be planted with the index down on the second fret. I'm gonna pick it and then hammer on the fourth note. So to know what's going on, you have to be really familiar with the song you're trying to learn so you can get the rhythm down because Tab is just telling you the technique and the notes, not the speed or the timing, okay? This next technique, as well as uh, the notation, is called a pull-off. It's kind of the opposite of the hammer-on. So if you look there, it's on the A string, so Eddie 8, and it starts on the 6th fret. It's connected to the 4th fret, and it's a P, so it's a pull-off. So that means that we're going to... That's planted. This is getting pulled off to that note, like that. We saw a bunch of them in a row. So that is the pull off. Now the trill, as you can see the symbol for it, the trill is like a hammer on, but hammering it on really fast with one finger planted and the other one going really fast for a trill. So if we look at the fret numbers here, it's 8 to 10 on the B string. So we're going to go 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we have the 9, 10. And so when you see that trill there, that means this.
That's the trill. Okay, the next one is vibrato. So look at that symbol. Vibrato is a technique that you're going to have to learn as a guitar student, um, but the tab is a way to tell you where it is. So if it's the fifth fret on the D string, it's some kind of vibrato. We don't know the context. I'll probably use my ring finger. So it's telling me there's some kind of vibrato there. A wiggling of that note. Okay? Now we don't know if, you know, if you got to know the song to know what kind of vibrato is going on there. Once again, the tab is a shorthand way to get you going there. Okay, now let's talk about some string bending notation in tablature. We've got the seventh fret on the G string. And when I'm bending a string, I'm usually going to bend with my ring finger and then the middle finger behind it and sometimes the index behind that even to bend that note. I'm using the strength of all three fingers there to bend it. Now, if you look at the first symbol, it says half. That means we're going to be bending this pitch note, this note. We're going to bend it up to a half step up. That pitch, but with that fret bent up to that pitch. We're bending a half step. The next one is a whole step. That means we're going to bend this pitch up to that. And that's always the best way to test your bending is to hear the pitch you're trying to bend up to. For right now, it's the ninth fret on the G, and we're going to bend the seventh up to that pitch. Okay. Then, what do you think the next one is? It's a step and a half, so we need to bend this note up to a whole step and a half step. Now we really got to start bending the strings. Bending it up to the note. And then finally, the number two means two whole steps from the seven. So that to that. So that's what you see there with the bend is how far of a step the pitch needs to go. Now this next bend notation is a string bend and a release. So if we look at it, we've got the ninth fret on the B string, all right? So that would be right here. And it's saying a whole step bend, then let it relax back down to that same pitch. So it's going to be a whole step bend up and then back down natural. We don't know the context of how long to hold the bend. That's not what the tab is for. So let's hear the whole step pitch. So we're bending it up a whole step and then letting it relax back down to the pitch of that fret right there. Bend and release. Bend and vibrato is just what it sounds like. We're going to bend it up. It tells us how far. So a half step, 12th fret on the G, a half step bend and vibrato. This next technique is a unison bend. And if you look carefully, you'll see that the, the bend line there with the little arrow is just on one of those notes. So what it's telling you there is that the fifth fret of the high E is playing out, but the eighth fret of the B string is being bent up a whole step. And it's called unison because that note up a whole step is the same note that we're hitting on the fifth fret of the high E, an A note. 
So it's a unison bend, meaning we're bending this note up to the same pitch as that. And it has a really cool effect that you hear in lots of rock. A lot of the most classic rock songs of all time have this in there. And you'll hear it like this. The next two notations are for sliding. Now, the first one that you see is a slide up and not picking the second note of the slide. So if it was seventh fret on the D string up to the ninth, that's what that looks like. We're not going to pick that note again. Now, look at the next notation, which is seven to nine. We're going to do the same thing, but the way that notation is, they're not connected, which means we're going to slide, but we're also going to pick. Now, when they have a, a tie together, you don't pick that second note. Those are the differences. Now, look at that next one there. It's the 12th fret on the D string, and it says harm, harmonic. It's a natural harmonic, and that's a technique that you're going to have to learn. But when you see that, you know it means this. So right there, it's the 12th fret. Natural harmonic means... 12th fret on the D, I'm not pressing down to get that note. I'm relaxing my finger over the bracket right there and letting it just vibrate under my finger so it rings out. That's called a natural harmonic. They work better on certain frets, the 12th fret being one of them. Alright, so the next sections have to do with tapping, and tapping is not my forte, but when you see that T there, that means tapping. So for instance, if you just see a 12 on the B string there, really all we're knowing is that we're going to be tapping down there. Now when you see the 12 and the 10, and, it, and it's written like that with the T there, that means a tap on the 12 with the index finger planted on the 10. Like that. So I'm tapping the 12 and pulling it off to 10, meaning that finger there. Now when you see the PH, that's the, the pinch harmonic, which really it helps to have a lot of distortion, but it's also a trick not just of metal guys, but also guys like uh, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top. So if we look at the seventh fret on the G string there, and it's saying pinch harmonic, that's the, that's the sound of the pinch harmonic as opposed to and the way I get that sound you're going to need a whole nother lesson on pinch harmonic techniques, but basically I choke up on the pick. I, I bring the pick in and I get a lot of meat of my finger as I'm playing the note. I like dig my finger in and that's how you get that pinch harmonic. All right, now we've come to a little passage here. And I want to remind you that we're reading it left to right. The first example here, we don't see any notes stacked. They're going left to right. So we're going to play the fret numbers. And now notice it starts on the high E, 8th fret. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 8th fret. And we have 8, 7, 5. Now as I look at that, it makes sense for me because I've been playing guitar a long time to use my pinky ring and index. The next passage is the same thing, but on the next string. So, A, 7, 5. 
then 7, 5, 4, we're going to figure out, I'm going to put my pinky here. And then the next string, same thing. Now look at the next string. The A string is 7, 5, 3. And then finally, that last string is 7, 5, 3 as well. So, because they're tab, I don't know how fast the notes go by or how long they ring out, but I do know that the notes will be 8, 7, 5, 8, 7, 5, 7, 5, 4, 7, 5, 4, 7, 5, 3, 7, 5, 3. So finally, because the notes are stacked, we have chords. And if you look at where we put our fingers, I can see that it's a G chord. Same thing again. Then a D chord, and look at the numbers, they're stacked. Twice. Then an E minor twice. C twice, then a G. Now look at this. We got to read this next part left to right. So third fret high E, open D, because that's the next one from left to right, open G, third fret, third fret. And that's your basic breakdown. All right, lots of uh, notations covered there with reading tabs. Anyway, just remember uh, to keep playing guitar. Think of guitar first um, as opposed to just numbers on a screen for tabs. You know, you really want to try and get that inner musician to come out, um, learn guitar be besides just tabs, and then use those tabs as a guideline to help you learn your favorite songs faster. So once again, I'm Marty Schwartz. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope to see you around the internet here. Uh, take care.